BlackBerry's back in the game, and this time it's got its crosshairs set on Windows Phone. Let's see how the two flagships compare. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is BlackBerry Z10 versus Nokia Lumia 920. We've already compared the new BlackBerry 10 platform to Windows Phone 8 in an earlier video, and we have much more BlackBerry content at pocketnow.com, so follow us in the links in the description below so you don't miss any more. For this comparison, we'll be looking at four broad categories, hardware, software, ecosystem, and camera. Diving right into the hardware, the differences are significant between these flagships. BlackBerry was going for thin and light with its Z10, and Nokia was definitely not. The Lumia 920 is larger in almost every dimension. Most notably, it's 10.7 millimeters thick to the Z10's 9 millimeters. The Lumia's added bulk is significant, especially since the 920 is 47 grams heavier than the Z10. We've talked before about why the Lumia 920 is such a tank. There's good reasons for it, and it does tend to make the Windows Phone feel more substantial in a reassuring way, but there's no getting around it. It is definitely the bigger of the two devices. The design languages almost couldn't be more different. BlackBerry's Z10 is an aggressive collection of almost brutal, sharp right angles and a no-nonsense exterior, very reminiscent of products from the Motorola Droid family. The similarity to the iPhone 5 is there, but it's not as pronounced in person, as the Z10 is considerably larger than the Apple device, and it's much more rough in terms of tone. In short, the Z10 looks like it means business, which is probably what BlackBerry was going for. The Lumia 920 conveys an entirely different feeling, and not just because our demo unit here is white. Rounded corners dominate the hardware, from edges, to buttons, to the camera bezel. The curved back even carries a non-threatening nickname, the Nokia Smile. The design language here says piece of art that's also a smartphone, whereas the Z10 conveys the exact opposite message. Practical differences abound as well. The BlackBerry Z10 features a removable 1800 mAh battery and 16 gigs of onboard storage, expandable up to 64 gigs additional with microSD. The Lumia's 2000 mAh battery and 32 gigs of onboard storage are each bigger than the BlackBerry's, but they're also non-removable and non-expandable, so it is a less versatile device. By the way, we're still doing endurance testing on the Z10, but early indications show that investing in a spare battery might be a good idea. As far as the heartbeat is concerned, both phones are running on a 1.5 GHz dual-core processor, but the BlackBerry packs 2 GB of RAM to the Lumia's single GB. It also features a micro HDMI port if you want more wires in your life, whereas the Lumia features wireless charging ability if you want fewer. Finally, the display on the Windows Phone is a 4.5-inch panel to the BlackBerry's 4.2 inches. They're identical in resolution, so pixel density is slightly higher on the BlackBerry's smaller screen, but the BlackBerry screen is also a tad dimmer than the Lumia's, and it doesn't feature the Nokia's 60Hz refresh rate. Otherwise, the screens deliver similar performance both indoors and out, but the BlackBerry doesn't feature Gorilla Glass protection, so watch out for drops. The profound differences in hardware also carry over to software as well. We covered this in our BlackBerry 10 versus Windows Phone 8 video from Toronto, but in brief, the similarities on the lock screens don't carry over to the OS. BlackBerry 10 is a highly gesture-based OS, with swipes in and out, hidden side and top panes, and even a gesture-based unlock from the home screen. Most significant is the messaging experience, probably the best feature of BlackBerry 10, featuring an integrated list of all notifications from almost every app on the device, along with peak functionality that allows you to check what kind of messages are waiting for you without leaving the app that you're currently in. And of course, there's the spark of the iconic flashing red BlackBerry light. Windows Phone navigation is similar with the familiar scrolling and swiping, but there's very little gesture-based input. That means the OS is simpler to use, with a less burdensome learning curve, and visually the modern UI design language is much cleaner than BlackBerry's offering. Windows Phone's lack of a unified notification center will annoy you if you want an aggregated list of what's new, but if you prefer a glanceable look at alerts without having to jump into a hub, Windows Phone's live tiles do that better. It all depends on your own workflow and style. BlackBerry edges out Windows Phone in terms of a unified search, Typing a search term shows every instance of that term on the device, and also lets a user jump out to various internet search engines and searchable apps as well. 
Most of that functionality is available on Windows Phone as well, but in a very compartmentalized experience. Searching for people requires you to search the People Hub. Searching for email happens in the Email app. Searching for an app requires you to hop on over to the App List. Pressing the Spyglass key lets you search online, etc. Again, it's just a different way of doing things. Which one you prefer is up to you. Personal preference will also dictate what keyboard you prefer. We've always loved the Windows Phone typing experience, and that's especially true on the luxurious and spacious keyboard of the Lumia 920. Its responsiveness is great, and its autocorrect is outstanding, but it's also quite conventional. BlackBerry, by contrast, opts to save you time with a different approach, an aggressive predictive text scheme that floats words up under your fingers as you type, right under your fingertips. It takes a lot of getting used to, and it's practically useless in high-speed two-handed typing, but if you're pecking out a text with one hand, it's pretty handy, and it's quite responsive in its own right. Speaking of responsiveness, it's always good to have a quick look at browser performance. While these devices are almost on even footing in terms of raw responsiveness, scrolling and resolve is pretty fluid on each, the BlackBerry offers additional support in terms of flash. On heavy pages, though, like the Pocket Now front page, it does stumble a bit more than the Windows Phone browser, and it needs to load for a bit longer. There's clearly some optimization still needed here. Speaking of optimization, the last point we'll touch on in software is stability. And here, Windows Phone doesn't just take the cake, it devours it, gives you the dirty plate, and then runs away, laughing. BlackBerry 10 is a very cool new platform, but it's also very young, and we found many of the bugs you'd expect from such a youthful device. Everything from GPS not resolving, to data failing with a full signal, to strange minimized card views of the screen, to being unable to return to the home screen at all. Taken together, the quirks of BlackBerry's new OS significantly diminish the overall experience. We're sure they'll be corrected shortly, but for now, Windows Phone 8 definitely wins as far as stability and reliability are concerned. Both Windows Phone 8 and BlackBerry 10 launched without an excellent assortment of apps, but Windows Phone has had quite a head start on growing its selection. While BlackBerry boasted 70,000 apps at last week's unveiling, many of these have been ported from Android, and the experience is less than stellar. The nicely designed BlackBerry app world does in fact have some big name titles, with more coming, but as of now they're few and far between. In their place are knockoff titles, often with poor review scores. Windows Phone might still be fighting tooth and nail for apps, but it's finally got some momentum behind it, and we're seeing a lot of big name developers bringing their titles to Microsoft's platform. That's further augmented by Nokia's enhanced exclusive apps for phones like the 920, which make it even better. When you consider the hardware support for the Lumia line in terms of wireless charging, audio docks, and so on, it's pretty obvious that the incumbent Lumia 920 has the edge in terms of ecosystem, for now. We'll have to wait to see how quickly BlackBerry is able to build momentum of its own, though, before we pass judgment overall. The Lumia 920 has made a name for itself as an excellent camera phone on the basis of its 8.7 megapixel pure-view camera with optical image stabilization, and it's well-earned. The Lumia's camera is one of the best we've used on a smartphone, despite its occasional softness and focus and its somewhat bare-bones viewfinder software. The lenses offered by Nokia and others really do a good job of enhancing its aftermarket value as well. The BlackBerry Z10's camera is also an 8-megapixel shooter with backside illumination, but it doesn't deliver the depth or the sharpness that the 920's camera does. In still-shot comparisons, shots often come out darker and hazier, and of course, there's no hardware image stabilization to speak of. It's not a bad camera by any means, it's just not in the same league as Nokia's premium PureView module. We'll have video impressions shortly. Ultimately, if messaging is more important to you than apps, if you value fluid multitasking and enhanced search over glanceable information, if you're willing to slog through the bugs and weirdness that characterizes a new OS, and you need the old-world enterprise support only BlackBerry can provide, the Z10 is a good choice for you. If you prefer a more established operating system with a stronger ecosystem, a rock-solid and stable interface backed up by hardware that includes one of the best smartphone cameras around, the Lumia 920 will probably be a better fit. Folks, that's going to do it for our BlackBerry Z10 versus Nokia Lumia 920 comparison. Feel free to follow us in the links down in the description below. Stay tuned for a full BlackBerry Z10 review coming in the days ahead. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.